This is the device we're going to use to grow microorganisms. In the fermenter, we face two challenges. Basically, we need to apply the optimum growth conditions for the microorganisms to grow. We're interested in growing useful microorganisms like the penicillium I was telling you about. But at the same time, we want to prevent the growth of harmful microorganisms like pathogens, those that cause disease. Now, let's tackle each one of those issues separately. Let's start with the optimum conditions to grow microorganisms. So these could be summarized by this mnemonic called FATUM. So F stands for food, A stands for acidity, pH, T for temperature, the other T is for time, because growth of microorganisms requires time, O for oxygen, and M for moisture or water. So again, you would need all of these components to successfully grow microorganisms. Organisms. Now, when you provide all of these components, the microorganisms would start to grow at fast rates. So again, for bacteria or fungi to reproduce rapidly, you would need all of these conditions. So um, once we have all of these provided, we also need to make sure, remember the two challenges, we also make sure that the, we're growing the right microorganism. We're not growing pathogenic bacteria or fungi. So before we set up or before we start our batch in the fermenter, we must make sure that we're getting rid of all of the pathogens because those are available everywhere. So we apply bleach or we apply steam to clean up the fermenter and make sure we don't have any contamination. Now, let's start talking about the optimum conditions inside the fermenter. So how do we set up the fermenter to make sure that the microorganisms, the useful ones, are growing at a fast rate? So let's start with the inlets here. So I have two inlets, one for bacteria here. Basically, this could be bacterium, fungi, depending on what you're planning to grow. And the second is for nutrients. Now, what are these nutrients that you need to grow bacteria or microorganisms in general, you would definitely need glucose because glucose is universal. It's needed as an energy source for respiration for all living organisms. But you do also need a source of nitrogen. Why nitrogen is such an important nutrient or such an important element, I should say, for the growth of microorganisms. Nitrogen is a component of proteins and proteins are very important for growth. They're very important to make uh, enzymes. So for that reason, we need to supply those microorganisms with one of those three possible sources of nitrogen. One is going to be amino acids. These are the building blocks of protein. Ammonia is a gas. We could bubble this gas in the fermenter or we could possibly dissolve some ammonium salts. All of these or any of these would do as a source of nitrogen. Now, other than this, we need to provide oxygen. So we bubble, usually, we bubble oxygen here at the bottom. Oxygen is needed for the microorganisms to respire aerobically. But we do also need to get rid of waste gases such as carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is acidic and we have to get rid of, we have to get rid of excess carbon dioxide. So we have like a little chimney here on the top to let the carbon dioxide and other waste gases out of the fermenter. This will help to prevent the building up of pressure inside the fermenter. Now, to make sure that the fermenter is not overheating, we do have a cool water cycle running around the fermenter. Here shown in blue. This cool water cycle, we call it usually the water jacket, helps to cool down the fermenter because as those bacteria are respiring, they will release heat energy and that will overheat the fermenter. Now, we must make sure that we're actually monitoring the temperature so we know when to run this cold water cycle around the fermenter. And we must make sure that we're monitoring the pH changes. So we do have probes. What's a probe? A probe is a sensor to detect the changes of temperature and pH because otherwise the changes in temperature and in acidity or pH would cause the enzymes of the bacteria to denature. Now, to make sure that the components, the nutrients, the oxygen and the bacteria are mixed continuously, we do have a stirrer, and that stirrer just helps to basically to distribute the heat around the fermenter equally and to mix the components. So you can see here how this uh, stirrer basically works. It's just some paddles to rotate continuously and make sure that none of the components is settling at the bottom because otherwise the rate of reaction would slow down drastically. Lastly, once we grow the bacteria in these right conditions, they would make the products we're interested in. So this product could be an enzyme, could be some food components, it could be uh, antibiotics.